is driven by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And in part by Quiznos. Mm, Quiznos, love what you eat. And Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Rogers up, made the shot, fouled. Back up and good. 76 all. Davis up off the glass, good. Carroll's all the way down, layup, good. Davis up off the glass, good, tied it. Holmes got it back, put it up, that is it. Five overtime, longest game in Big 12 history, and the Bears win it tonight. Well, the Bears ranked for the first time in nearly 40 years. You didn't think somebody was going to take it away from them, did you? Scott Drew's team now by the numbers. Numbers 29. Wednesday's went snap to 29 game losing streak against ranked opponents from they almost beat Washington State earlier in the year. 16 wins, and it's the most in the Scott Drew era as he has rebuilt that program in Waco and turned them into a legitimate team in the Big 12. And then two consecutive conference row wins that the Bears have for the first time since 2003. They've just broken a 25-game losing streak in the conference. Now, only one non-conference top 50 victory for Baylor. That came against Notre Dame. Scott Drew built the schedule so he could get some wins. A lot of high-profile programs have done that as well, but now the conference players here, they're seeing their schedule start to step up a little bit, and they're going to have to, in turn, do the same thing if they want to enhance their resume for going to the NCAA tournament. You know, you look at some of those teams, one of them, uh, the reigning national champion. I love what Florida's doing right now with this young basketball team. Give Billy Donovan credit. Yes, Jay Lucas and Nick Kalafas are the two freshman guards playing well. What he's decided to do is to press full court. They have survived with the pressure defense full court wide. When you get guys playing full court defense, you play more aggressive at half court. So maybe they're not sound defensively, but to me, they're that solid. Yeah, I look at Arizona State. Coach Herb Sendek has done a great job. They've got two outstanding players and James Arden and Jeff Pendergraft. They're four and two in the Pac-10, but they've lost their last two games. They play Washington State in, uh, today, but on the road, they play three straight road games. UCLA, USC, and Arizona. We're going to find out a lot about Arizona State in the next two weeks. You know, and you might be able to accuse Indiana of having a soft non-conference schedule, but they knew they had enough tough games built into their Big Ten schedule to be really good at the end of the year. What do we know about Indiana? They've got the best scoring two guard in the country in Eric Gordon, and they've got one of the top five big guys in the country in D.J. White, who has been an absolute man all season long. DJ, there's been nobody that's been better than D.J. White. He's averaging a double-double, especially over his last eight or nine games. He's been averaging about 20 points, 11 rebounds. He's shooting over 63% from the field. He's running the floor. He has been the dominant big guy, not only in the Big Ten, but I think you can argue outside of Michael Beasley, who's been better than D.J. White? Now, I don't know if you can find anybody else. He's been terrific, so what are you telling me? You don't really care about Indiana's RPI number and the schedule. They're good? They're good enough in your eyes? Hey, they're passing the Billis eye test. That gets them in. Wow. They're, they're good. Wow! Really good. <laughs> okay, well, let me throw some other numbers at you and see if this team is also passing the Phyllis eye test. And for you guys, perhaps the Achilles heel for North Carolina has been defense. Now, they're 235th in scoring defense. Don't care about that. They play fast, a lot of possessions. But 108 in field goal percentage in the last six games, you see, I think, haven't been that great defensively for them. So I think the question is, how much, if any, does North Carolina need to change the Tarios want to win a national championship. Well, offensively, they don't need to change anything. They're second in the country in scoring at 91 points a game, but defensively, they have to be more consistent. They've been up and down all season. They got away with it with Clemson and also Georgia Tech, but they weren't able to get away with it against Maryland. And this is a team that needs to get stops, not uh, stop dribble uh, penetration, contesting shots. And if they do this, this team has enough talent to get to a Final Four and win a national championship. Let's go back to when Sean May was on the team and they win a national title after playing for Roy Williams for two years. Tyler Hansbrough, who's probably the best big man in the country, in my opinion, he's got everything going his way. This team reminds me of what Florida was last year, waiting for March Madness. Yes, championship week into the first, second round. They know when they lost last year to Georgetown, didn't get to the Final Four, Ty Lawson and company, yeah, they want to get to San Antonio, but like what we saw Florida last year, they lost some midseason games, 
When Joe Kim Noah and Trump came around, they go 6-0 and oh in March, and that's what Carolina's going to wait to do. I don't think this team is like Florida. Uh, and, and I don't think you can compare them to the 2005 team because the 05 Carolina team had Jackie Manuel and they had Raymond Felton, who were really vocal leaders. You know, this team, I think if you say they've got a problem, and it's a relative problem because they're, they're top four good. A lot good. of teams like that yeah, one it's relative yeah. now. But the thing that would worry me, do they have an on-off switch on the defensive end? When they get into a half-court game, can they take you out of what you do enough to win a game defensively when they're off? Because they're not a great shooting team. They can really score. But if you can lock them down into a half-court game, is that what's going to be the demise for them? How much has your opinion of them changed, though, over the last couple of weeks? At one point, you were saying you thought they were the best team in the country. I did. I still I still think they're right there. I mean, you know, we're saying they're number three, maybe number four. They're right there to win it all. And defensively, that can't be inconsistent. Your shot is all is going to be up and down. Defense is the one thing that you have to bring every night, and they haven't been able to do that. I disagree. I think they're going to make it. They remind, yeah, Maryland beat them at home, but le look, look what Gary Williams has done. He beats Duke twice last year, Carolina. He'll be ready for taking on Duke this weekend. I'm not going by. I buy Carolina right. to get it done. Well, you look at America's vote right now on ESPN.com, how far will North Carolina go? 45% of the people out there think the Tar Heels, despite perhaps the defensive struggles, will go to the Final Four, or perhaps even farther. Still to come on College Game Day from a rocking Southern Illinois. What impact has the Patriots' pursuit of perfection had on a couple of teams still perfect in college basketball? And who will be the last four in? And you know what? Tournament time is closing in already, headed to the second half of the season. Who's sitting on that bubble at the moment? Welcome back to College Game Day, driven by State Farm. A constant reminder in the Southern Illinois locker room where they stand in the Missouri Valley Conference. Uncharacteristically, the Saluki's sitting in the middle of the pack, just behind Creighton, their arch rival. They'll play them tonight. Saluki's have won regular season or conference tournament the last six years. And they also have a rooting interest in the upcoming Super Bowl. Giants running back Brandon Jacobs finished his college career as a Saluki, rushing for nearly 1,000 yards in his final campaign before becoming the go-to back for the Giants. And here he is after transferring from Auburn 2004. He exploded onto the scene. Big body, great speed runner. Jacobs making his foundation for his run to the Super Bowl here at Southern Illinois. And he is just one of the notable alums who claim SIU's own Jim Belushi, TV star Dennis Frost, midwife PD Blue, actor who's won numerous awards. Also, there's Jenny McCarthy. I know that's one of Digger's favorite models, comedians, and actresses. And then Richard Roundtree, Shaft. Does it get any better than Shaft? Jones. And then you have the current basis for the Rolling Stones, Daryl Jones, all of whom called Carbondale home and matriculated here at Southern Illinois. So a rich and diverse history here at SIU. And Southern Illinois has also created a culture of winning in the Missouri Valley Conference. But right now, it's almost like the Bizarro Valley. You have Drake, which has turned things upside down, the only undefeated team in the conference right now. Southern Illinois, which had the crux of a veteran team coming back, sitting a game at under 500 overall. Why do you think the shift in the Valley, Hubert? Well, I mean, I don't think they did a good job in non-conference play. When you look at the Missouri Valley, they've been had multiple bids into the NCAA tournament nine straight years. Because this year they had three top 50 wins. Last year they had 15 top 50 wins. And because they did not get it done in non-conference play, I think for the first time in the last nine years, the Missouri Valley is going to get one bid into the NCAA tournament. Wait, 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 wait. Drake's in the top 10 right now in the RPI. Why? They played they, one top 25 team, and they lost yeah, by six. But they haven't played anybody terrible. So what? They, they, they haven't played the anybody good. They beat the formula. <laughs> well, let's look at the Valley. Last year, one team in the Sweet 16. Year before, you've got who? Bradley and Wichita State. Southern Illinois got it last year and made a great appearance in, in representing their conference. I think conferences all make a shift sooner or later because of graduation and what you see going on with younger players. Look at the A-10 this year. We got four teams going after it. When you look at what's going on with Dayton, obviously Xavier, and then Rhode Island, and UMass making some noise. 
So it's not so much that it's not a conference ship. It, you go through recycling, and that's what's going on in the Valley. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's more a function of cycles. Two years ago, Wichita State was one of the best teams in the league. They've taken a little bit of a step back with different guys graduating and having new people in. Same thing with a team like Bradley. Uh, Southern Illinois is going through it right now. I mean, Southern Illinois lost Tony Young, who was their best on-ball defender. They also lost Jamal Tatum. That stuff happens. You don't see it happen in the bigger conferences quite as much. But I agree with Hubert on Drake. I think Illinois State may be the best team in this league. Yes. Okay, well, let me ask you, is it a one-bid league? Yes, one-bid league. I don't, 